Good morning. Uh, so my name is Rick, and uh, I come as a guest from Crossroads, Rhode Island. That's the nonprofit that I work with. And uh, part of the fun that I get to have within that role is to uh, connect with our partners in the community. And this congregation is uh, one of our strong supporters. And so I'm really delighted to be here today, um, as I was sharing uh, a bit earlier. Uh, we oftentimes uh, say thank you over the phone or through letter. Uh, it's not every day that um, we get to uh, see people uh, face to face and, and say thank you. So um, please know how grateful uh, we are. And so on behalf of Crossroads and all the clients that we serve, uh, thank you very much for your support. Uh, in addition uh, to sharing a little bit about, um, in, in addition to saying thank you, I wanna share a bit about our work some of you may be a little less familiar with Crossroads Rhode Island and, and what our mission is. So we serve as the state's leading provider of housing and services to people experiencing homelessness. Uh, so we uh, own and manage about 375 of what we call permanent supportive housing units across the state. We operate five emergency shelters. And uh, over the course of 2023, uh, we uh, served about 4,000 individuals, that's men, women, and children, seeking housing and housing-related services. And we were able to do that in part because of your support and partnership. I um, want to kind of create a, a, a sense of, um, uh, provide a sense of uh, what's driving um, the increase in rates of homelessness. Um, uh, a big part of that uh, has to do with uh, the lack of affordable housing. So a lot of folks are struggling right now uh, with uh, rates of housing, uh, the cost of housing that is uh, skyrocketing. And I think uh, we all feel that to some extent, whether we're uh, homeowners or renters. Um, I know personally, um, I've heard some stories from some of our clients that go something like this, that uh, they've been living uh, in an apartment for a number of years, um, living paycheck to paycheck, but making their rent on time. And so they're stable in their housing. And then after five years, uh, the, the home gets sold to a new landlord. And that person says, I need to raise the rent to market rate. And so it's going up by $500 a month. And so a family uh, that was maybe scraping by, uh, paying $1,200 a month for maybe your average two bedroom apartment now pays 1,700. And those kinds of increases to people's cost of living um, makes, makes it very hard for many people. And so that's um, in large part what's driving um, uh, homelessness. Uh, that's why we're seeing an increase in the number of people in Rhode Island who face homelessness. And we know it um, uh, because the data uh, is clear on this. Um, uh, every year, Rhode Island uh, participates in what's called a point in time count. And this is when service providers and volunteers go out into the communities uh, statewide and they literally count all of the individuals experiencing homelessness on one night in January. And they go into shelters and they count all the people there. And then uh, they rely on outreach workers and people uh, who uh, have rapport with folks that live uh, in uh, encampments and tents in the woods, people who are sleeping in their cars, people who are in uh, abandoned buildings or other places not fit for human habitation. And they count those individuals as well. And uh, what we've seen over the last five years is a, a, a dramatic increase in the number of people experiencing homelessness. Uh, in the last year, we've seen a 35% increase in the number of uh, people who are homeless in the state of Rhode Island. 60% uh, of those who are unsheltered homeless, so those are the folks that are uh, not in emergency shelters, folks that are living in cars and in tents in the woods. And when we look back over the last five years, we, we see some really troubling numbers. Uh, since 2019, uh, the percentage of those who are unsheltered and uh, who are, uh, excuse me, unhoused and unsheltered has gone up by 652% uh, in the last five years. That's a pretty unbelievable number. It's a number that I have a hard time wrapping my head around. Um, but unfortunately, when I share that statistic, folks are not terribly surprised because we see it, right? We see it for ourselves. We see it on our commutes. We see it where we walk our dogs. We see it uh, on our, uh, on our uh, normal everyday trips uh, to the supermarket. People 
sleeping, living in places that we didn't see, places um, where we didn't see people before. And so uh, these alarming statistics uh, motivate us um, as an agency to respond well uh, to the housing crisis, to the increased rates of homelessness statewide. Uh, we are very busy uh, expanding programs, um, uh, building capacity, and uh, we're engaged uh, in building new affordable housing for people who were previously homeless. Uh, one of the things I brought with me today, and I'm hoping that I'll have a, an opportunity to connect to some of you after the service, is a, a flyer that, that shows um, a new uh, housing development that we're working on in Providence. Uh, this is a really exciting thing uh, in, our, in our history as an organization. So we've been around for a long time, 130 years this year. Uh, but I am making an argument that this is probably the most exciting part of our history, uh, the most exciting time to be uh, working with Crossroads because uh, we, are, we are building and infusing more affordable housing into the rental market than ever before. And, um, and I get to see it uh, out my uh, office window every day. It's a building that's five stories high. It's right, right, right across the street from me. And it's about halfway through its completion. Uh, and so by next semester, um, by next September, uh, we hope to have this beautiful apartment complex, uh, 176 units of permanent supportive housing for people who were previously homeless. And we hope to move those folks in a year from now. And so it's a very exciting uh, point, even in the midst of some really troubling numbers. Um, so I uh, just want to say thank you again. Uh, grateful to your pastor for the opportunity to come and to share a little bit about Crossroads and the work that we're doing. And again, just know how grateful we are to the congregation for your support. And um, we look forward to extending that partnership into the future. So thank you very much. And I look forward to speaking with some of you after the service. Thank you.